We now turn to the fundamental theorem of calculus. As the name indicates, it's a very important theorem. And the reason why it's important is because this is a basic tool that is going to allow us to calculate efficiently uh, definite integrals. Right, so far, for definite integrals, either we have a geometric interpretation or we have to go back to what it means in terms of limits of Riemann sums and we have seen that this is very cumbersome to handle. So let's try to see what this theorem says. For the sake of argument, we're going to look at a continuous function that is positive on a closed interval because in that case we have an interpretation of the definite integral in terms of the area under the graph of the function. So if I pick an x in the interval a, b, I can look at the area under the graph of the function over the interval a, x instead of a, b. Something like that. And that would be the integral from a to x of the function f, which I can write as integral from a to x of f of t dt, just changing the name of the variable because x is one of the bounds. Now you see that when x changes, the area changes too. So this integral from a to x of f of t dt is a function of x. Let's call it g of x. The natural question is, is this function g of x a differentiable function of x? And if yes, what is its derivative? Okay, let's go back to the definition of the derivative. The derivative of g, by definition, is a limit, as h is approaching 0, of the difference quotient g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. Let's try to see if we can give a geometric interpretation for that. Here is x plus h for some small positive h. And so g of x plus h is the area under the graph of the function on the interval from a to x plus h. So this is g of x plus h. Now on the other end, this is g of x plus h, this is g of x, and therefore this is the difference g of x plus h minus g of x. This yellow area represents a difference. Okay, can we estimate this yellow area? If h is small, then this yellow area should not be too far off the area of this rectangle, which is a rectangle of width h and height f of x. So for h small, this difference g of x plus h minus g of x should be close to h times f of x. Or, dividing both sides by h, that the difference quotient g of x plus h minus g of x over h should be close to f of x when h is small. So it's a far cry from an actual proof that the derivative of g at x is f of x, but this indicates that this is a reasonable guess. And indeed, this is exactly what the fundamental theorem of calculus states. If I take a continuous function on a closed interval, then the function g of x defined by integrating f from a to x for an x between a and b is continuous on the interval and differentiable on the open interval and its derivative with respect to x is precisely f of x. Now the, the part that is sometimes called fundamental theorem of calculus and that is the part that we use the most is this corollary that whenever the function f is continuous on the interval a b to calculate the integral of f from a to b we only need to find an antiderivative of f let's say capital F on the interval and evaluate this antiderivative at the bounds of integration at b and at a and take the difference this we will see is a convenient notational uh, shortcut to denote this difference f of b minus f of a. So this difference f of b minus f of a for capital F, I'm going to write it as the function f of x, capital F of x, written between brackets, and the bounds of integration a and b are written on the right-hand side of the brackets. 
Okay, so to try to prove that this is indeed a corollary of the fundamental theorem of calculus, the assumption here is that capital F is an antiderivative of little f. What does the fundamental theorem of calculus say about antiderivatives of little f? Well, precisely that this function g, obtained by integrating little f from a to x, is an antiderivative of the function f of x. So if little g is an antiderivative of little f and capital F is another antiderivative of little f, we know that they differ only by a constant. In other words, capital F is really just g of x plus some constant. That means that when we take the difference of two values for capital F, namely capital F of b minus capital F of a, I'm going to get g of b plus c minus g of a plus c. The constant c is going to cancel out and we get just g of b minus g of a. And we have a definition for this function g. So I get the integral from a to b of the function f minus the integral from a to a of the function f. Of course the integral from a to a is zero because we integrate on an interval of width zero. So what we obtain is that f of b minus f of a is really just g of b which is the integral from a to b of the function f which is exactly what we wanted. So with this corollary in hand, we're going to have now a very efficient way to calculate definite integrals, at least as long as we know how to find an antiderivative of the function we're integrating. Now this fundamental theorem of calculus is fundamental enough that we're going to prove it in details, but I'll do that in the next video. First, I want to illustrate how you use it. So let's say we want to integrate um, the function x cubed plus x minus 1 on the interval 0, 1. We've seen how cumbersome it is to do that using um, Riemann sums. So now, with the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have an easy way to do that. What the theorem says is that if I can find an antiderivative of this continuous function on the interval, then I will just have to plug the values 1 and 0 inside this antiderivative and take the difference. So here, for polynomials, we've seen how to find antiderivatives. It's pretty straightforward. Antiderivative of x cubed plus x minus 1. We use the power rule for antiderivatives. Antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4. Of x is x squared over 2. Of 1 is x. The general form of the antiderivative should include some constant. But as we have seen, we don't need to worry about the constant because we're going to take the difference between two values and the constant is going to cancel out. So now, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral I'm looking for is simply capital F of 1 minus capital F of 0 because the function x cubed plus x minus 1 is continuous on the interval 0, 1. When I plug 1 in my function, I get 1 fourth plus 1 half minus 1. When I plug 0, I get 0. So 1 fourth plus 1 half is 3 fourths minus 1 negative 1 fourth, and this is my integral. Now you see that here it was a little bit cumbersome to introduce this symbol for the antiderivative, and I have to say an antiderivative of this function is this other function. So this is where uh, our notational device comes in. In fact, the way we would denote that is simply to write our antiderivative directly between brackets without giving a name for it. So here, when we have x cubed plus x minus 1, it's easy to see that the antiderivative is x to the fourth over 4 plus x squared over 2 minus x. We simply write this antiderivative between brackets with the bounds of integration written on the right-hand side of the brackets. And then we plug in the values in the function. So we have the value at 1, 1 fourth plus 1 half minus 1, minus the value at 0, which in this case is 0. Let's look at another example. Let's say this time we want to integrate from 0 to 2 the function x squared multiplied by 1 minus x cubed. It's going to be about finding an antiderivative because the fundamental theorem of calculus applies because this function is continuous. It's a polynomial. Um, we've seen that to find antiderivatives, uh, we have trouble if we are looking for antiderivatives of products. So if I have an integral of a product, I'm going to write it as um, an integral of a polynomial in standard form by 
multiplying things through. So in this case, it's simply the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared minus x to the fifth. And now I apply the parallel for antiderivatives. An antiderivative of x squared minus x to the fifth is x cubed over 3 minus x to the sixth over 6. And what the fundamental theorem of calculus says is that because the function x squared minus x to the fifth is continuous on the interval 0, 2, this definite integral is exactly the difference of the values of this antiderivative at 2 and at 0. So I plug x equal 2 in this, I get 8 third minus 64 6, and I plug x equal 0 in this and I get 0. So this is just 8 third minus 64 6, which simplifies as negative 8.